casting weapon props and flexible prototypes using FP90 casting rubber. In this tutorial, we're going to cover the process of casting with FP series rubbers for use as prop weapons, as well as flexible and semi-rigid prototypes. Now, the FP90 is the main FP series material we'll be focusing on in this video. This is a semi-rigid material. It's not as hard as a hard plastic. Uh, it still has a fair amount of give, so it's ideal for these kind of uh, handheld weapon props. Now, FP90 is a 2 to 1 mix ratio casting rubber. And by casting rubber, it's a little different than some of the mold making polyurethanes in that it is designed to cure fast and, of course, has a much lower mixed viscosity. So, FP90 casting rubber, again, it's part of the FP series of casting rubber materials, and we'll get more into that here in just a minute. But the main attributes that you need to know about is it's fast setting. So it has about a four to four and a half minute working time and then a 60 to 90 minute demold. And remember that heat accelerates that with polyurethanes. FP90 also has a low mix viscosity of 1500 centipoise and it's easy to pigment. It cures kind of a dark amber so it takes pigment well and has a fairly straightforward mix ratio of two parts B to one part A by weight. Now the FP series is a series of polyurethane casting rubbers that spans a good portion of the Shore A scale. So just to uh, refresh you on the Shore A scale, of course, low numbers are soft, high numbers are firm or hard. So uh, Shore A10 is a little bit firmer than average human skin, whereas up at the top you get uh, around an 80 to 90, an industrial roller or a roller skate wheel. Uh, 70 would be like a car tire running shoe sole would be around a 40 or 50 and rubber band would be about a 20 pencil eraser about a 40 but it's important to be to understand that scale if you're trying to match something especially if you're doing product development or prototyping and you're trying to mimic the properties of a material that you're going to use in injection molding so the FP series spans everything from a 25, the FP25, the FP40, the 50, 60, 70, and of course what we're using in this video, the very firm, almost semi-rigid FP90. Now in this tutorial I wanted to introduce you to several of the additives. So for this we're going to add some blue polypig and we're going to do that to complement some of the metallic pigment we'll be using. Now the UV100 additive is a UV additive which is designed to increase its ability to resist aging from UV light and sunlight. It won't stop it, but it will reduce it and slow it down. And finally we have the SC30 vanilla fragrance. And this can be added to cast to disguise the urethane smell. And this is used a lot by our customers that do uh, product development and of course prop making where actors are going to be handling a rubber prop and they don't want it to smell like an old tire. Now for casting, we're going to be using a 5130 silicone mold. Now 5130, real important, 5130 is a platinum silicone. And we recommend platinum silicone for casting any of the FP series materials because tin cures can sometimes inhibit some of the FP series materials. Now what I'm showing here is the vent system, which you can make out there in those little trenches going up the side. And what that does is that allows the casting material to be poured in. As you'll see here in a minute, we're going to force that in with a syringe. And then the air can come around the side and up the top. Now before we cast, we're going to brush a layer of the blue steel pigment powder on both halves of the mold. And what this does, this helps us simulate a metallic finish for weapon props like this. And you just need a very small amount of it. Just grab a little bit on the brush and it will stick to the silicone, but ultimately it will transfer to that FP90. And this is because of the very adhesive nature of polyurethanes. It's going to grab that metallic powder sitting on the surface of the mold and bond it to the polyurethane. Now this is why it's real important to apply a very minimal amount. If you apply too much, when you pull your part out, a lot of it's going to come off on an actor's hand. So real important, use a minimal amount of powder pigment on your brush when you're putting this in. And you can also use an air hose, take this outside, blow off any excess that way too. Now once that's coated, ready to close up our mold and strap it shut. 
and get ready to cast our material. Now, a quick word about temperature. This is in the winter time here in Texas, but real important, any of these room temperature cure materials, you want to make absolute sure you're working at at least 70 degrees. Below that, you'll find that you don't get the physical properties you need. You won't get a good full cure if it's too cold. So make absolute sure that you're working in a warm work environment and when summer comes around and you have really hot temperatures, remember that will act as an accelerator. Now it takes a very small amount of casting rubber to make this uh, prop wrench. So we're just mixing up a 150 gram batch and we're adding some of the poly pig blue pigment. And the whole point of that is just to give it a little bit of a background color behind that metallic powder. But I've measured out 100 grams of the part B. And I'm going to go ahead and get my pigment stirred into the B before I add the part A. Now the reason for that is to take full advantage of that very short working time, we want to first get the color mixing out of the way. And that allows us to get our color just right without using up valuable mixing time. Now I just added a little bit of the polypig blue, but if we wanted to, we could also add some polypig black or polypig white to get a, a little bit of a gray background color. But for what we're doing here, a little bit of the blue works perfect for that. Now again, FP90 is mixed 1A to 2B. So again here, we're adding 50 grams of part A to 100 grams of part B. Now, even though this part only took about 40 grams of liquid rubber, I like to have a little bit more than I actually need for the part. Obviously, I'm going to need to fill up that syringe. And also, when I inject this into the mold, it's going to need to fill that vent system. Very small amount of material, but still, we're going to need more than is actually used for the wrench. And be really careful when you're working in small batches, because small batches can lead to cure issues if you get off ratio. Now I'm using my pinky to plug up that syringe and I'm going to put that plunger in and get that shot into the mold. So again, real critical here, this doesn't take much material, but I'm just going to use that syringe to force that in. And because I was a little nervous about this technique, I went ahead and did this twice, which is probably overkill, but uh, I went ahead and filled up uh, that with the syringe with a little bit more material. And then this time I properly burp that air bubble out and then force the rest of that into that silicone mold. Now we're going to move to a separate cast. And I mainly threw this into the video just so you can see how some of these other additives are used. So this time we're going to go additive crazy with this cast. And this time I was just pouring up a little uh, ear sample and a little uh, piece out of a little decorative mold. But uh, some of you that are casting medical simulator parts and that sort of thing, you might be interested in some things I'm going to add to this. So first thing I've done after I've measured out 200 grams of my part B is I'm adding the UV 100 additive. And remember that you can add up to 1%. Now, once we've mixed the UV additive into the B, we're ready to add some of the SC30 vanilla fragrance. And again, this is mainly for those of you casting prototypes or uh, medical simulator parts, things like that, uh, where the smell is an issue. That's where we're just going to use a small amount of that. I don't even think I added a full 1%. And then, of course, we're going to add some medium flesh polypig. And again, not even 1%. I think I'll, I didn't even put in a full gram of that. And once we get that all stirred in, then we're ready to add our part A. But you see the importance there of mixing all of those things into that part B first, because that way we don't waste valuable working time uh, getting everything just right. So as soon as we put the part A in, that's when the clock starts ticking. So be prepared to uh, mix it and pour as soon as you add the part A. Now, another note about the molds. Again, these are all platinum silicone molds, but another thing that's really important when you're casting uh, rubber like this or resin or any polyurethane system, it's always a good idea to have warm molds uh, anywhere from about 90 to 100 degrees because what that does is heat lowers viscosity. So it helps the material flow a lot better into the mold and it also helps it cure, especially when you have parts with really thin sections. So one of those little details to file away. And again, you'll see I'm mixing this thoroughly. Um, 
it's not so much how long you mix it as much as how thorough you are mixing. So make sure you take time to scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing container. And here, again, just standard pour technique. Just pick one spot in the mold and pour it until it's full. And then I'm going to pour the excess into that little decorative mold. And I mainly use this little decorative mold because we do have some customers that cast like flexible trim molding and things like that. And that's another application where this FP90 could be used. And we're going to use a quick blast of some of our urethane mold release to release any air bubbles on the surface. And now we're ready to let everything set. So this is about an hour and a half later. And again, this is in a Texas winter where surprisingly things can get very cold. So I gave it plenty of time. I think I actually waited about two hours to demold it. And you see that, that uh, vent pull off right there. And while it's still somewhat green, you'll see when I demold this here in a minute, it's still going to be a little bit on the green side, still a little bit more flexible than it will ultimately be. But at that stage, that's when it's perfect for doing any trimming, uh, removing any flashing or any of those sprues. And now ready to check on our other little test parts. And you see those have come out beautifully. And again, that's uh, these are still going to be a little bit green at this stage. But I mainly wanted you all to see how you could use this, especially with the flesh pigment for medical simulator applications. We have a lot of people using the softer FP series like FP25 for uh, gunshot simulators and then backing that with the 266 flexible foam. So back to our wrench. Again, still a little bit green. After this sits for a few hours, it'll get a little bit firmer than this. But this will give you a good idea as to the final look. And again, at this stage, when we get that out of the mold, we can use an X-Acto knife or a scalpel to clean up that flange. And now we have our finished happy little action prop. Now, for those of you curious about this, we have a lot more resources on our website. So be sure to check the video description for links to both the casting rubber page so you can see all the different FP series materials, as well as a link to our video library. So I'll put links to all of the materials we used in this video, the additives in the FP series, and of course, the silicone mold material. And of course, it's always available on our website at brickintheyard.com. All of the materials in our tutorials are available on our web store so be sure to check that out and again be sure to check the video description and if you haven't already be sure to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon so you get notified when we post new content thanks for watching